Okay, so now we're going to apply, we're going to put the rubber to the road and drive our gas laws through problems um, and practicality. Okay, so I told you what you need to know um, for at the end of uh, the gas law uh, PowerPoint. Uh, now you're going to see how it applies and the problems and know how to use them. Okay, all right, so we're going to go each over each one of the laws that you can be Okay, first thing is Boyle's Law. And what we're going to do is we have a pressure of 405 kilopascals and a volume of 6 uh, centimeters uh, cubed. We're going to assume that the temperature is constant and no particles, are, no particles are constant. And what I want to know is what is the pressure, what is the new pressure, what is the pressure, new pressure, when I change the volume to 4 cubic centimeters. Now, if you remember, so if you decrease the volume the pressure should go up now units we don't have you don't have to do anything with the units here you don't have to do any kind of conversions of units okay unless I tell you uh, so simply you're just going to be using these these values here so um so you know Boyle's law is p1 v1 equals p1 v2 so p1 is 405 kPa v2 is uh, six centimeters cubed and V2 is four centimeters cubed. You re rearrange this equation to solve for P2 and that's how I usually do it. I s rearrange the equation first and then plug the numbers in. I know some people try to plug the numbers in and then solve for P2 but I like doing the algebra first. All right so P1 is this, V1 is this, and V2 is this. Okay and you get um, centimeters cubed cancel out do the math and you see indeed the pressure goes up exactly what you expected okay Boyle's law too All right we have a volume of 1.1 atmosphere and the uh, and, and I mean the, the pressure is 1.1 1 .1 and the and the volume is three, 326 uh, and I, now I'm going to increase, I want to increase the pressure. How do I do that with the volume? So how am I going to increase the pressure from 1.1 to 1.9 by changing the volume? All right, well, we know, so again, you don't do any conversions. It doesn't ask you for di any different units. Uh, this is that if you want to increase the pressure, you have to decrease the volume. So you should get a, a decrease in the volume. So you have this equation. And now what you're going to do is solve for V2. Okay, so you get P1, V1 equals over P2. Plug everything in. Atmosphere cancel out. And you get 189 centimeters cubed, which is, um, is less than we started with. And we expected that. So there's two Boyle's Law. So the main thing here is just uh, get the equation to... Uh, solve uh, rearrange equation to solve it like you want make sure you think about what you expect and then do your math and compare it to your expectations okay Charles law uh, so we're gonna do two here so I have 31 cel uh, Celsius is temperature and has a volume of 32 what volume does the gas occupy at 11 degrees C now I have to be careful here. So, uh, if we decrease the temperature, the volume should go down. Now the uh, Charles law is this equation here, but the problem is, is is that if you use Celsius in this equation, there are chances that you might get a negative number. So what we have to do whenever we use the laws that have temperature, we have to uh, we have to convert that to Kelvin before we can do the problem. So I want to change 31 and 11 both to Kelvin. And uh, I'm going to leave off 0.15. And I'm going to get, and I'm kind of going to be kind of sloppy with my sig figs here as well. But just, I just want to kind of do, go over the math. So, uh, so I'm in it, my initial temperature is 304. My final temperature is 284. So what I want to do is I want to solve for V2, my final velocity, uh, volume. Okay, so uh, 
divide both sides by T1. Okay, plug everything in. And my Kelvin cancel out. And I get 30 cubic centimeters. Okay, so I expected the volume to go down when the temperature goes down, and it does. Now, if you would have left it at 11, 31 to 11, the volume would have gone way down. Okay, okay, it would have been like 12. Okay, uh, so make sure that you always change your, you always get temperature in terms of Kelvin. I'm, yes. All right, second Charles Law. A sample gas has a volume 852 mils, so now we're using different units. Doesn't matter unless I tell you to. to. And I want to know what is, uh, and I have a temperature as 25 degrees C. What is the Celsius temperature um, if I change the volume what, uh, to 945 mils? So to change the volume, I have to increase the temperature. Okay, now, now this problem is a little tricky. So you have you have Celsius, and then you have to change that to Celsius. All right, switch 25 degrees to 291.5. So you go ahead and do the math, solve for T2, and then you get um, the final temperature is 331K, and that's an increase like you expected. But the problem is, is it says it says is that we want the temperature in Kelvin. So what you have to do is convert um, Kelvin back into uh, Celsius. So Kelvin is equal to 273 plus C. Okay. So rearrange it so C equals K minus 273. So you get uh, 331 minus 273 is 42C. Okay, gaze a little sex. We're going to do two, two laws for this. Um, two problems. So you have a pressure change. Determine pressure change when a constant volume of gas at one atmosphere is heated from 20 degrees to 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, Gabriel Sachs law uses temperature, so you have to make sure temperatures in Kelvin. So 20 degrees uh, is 293, 30 degrees 303, and again, I'm being a little sloppy with my sig figs, but I just want to go through the math. I want to, my initial pressure is one atmosphere, I want to find a new pressure, it's P2. So rearrange the equation in terms of P2. And then you plug things in, and then you get new temp pressures, 103. Um, should be 1.03 uh, atmosphere. So the, the pressure does go up when you increase the temperature to uh, 30 degrees. Okay, next problem. Uh, container has a pressure of 0.5 atmospheres and a temperature is 25 degrees C. Uh, what will be the new temperature in Celsius B if the pressures change to 9 PSI? So you can see that pressures are different units, so we're going to have to change that. Um, right now, we don't know if the pressure is going to go up or down just by looking at those numbers unless you know the conversion. Uh, so we really can't make an expectation, okay? Uh, if so, um, and also what we have to do is change the Celsius to Kelvin, but we're gonna to do the problem and to use the uh, the law, Gaisel Sachs law, but the answer wants it in Celsius, so we have to convert it back to Celsius. So the initial temperature is 25 plus 273, 298. Uh, to convert pressure to PSI or atmosphere, we're going to use atmosphere. Um, the relationship is one atmosphere, 14.7, and this will be given to you. Uh, do the math, the PSIs cancel out, and you end up 0.61. So the, the pressure goes up. 
So pressure goes from 0.5 to 0.61. That means the temperature is going to have to go up as well. Uh, so uh, so we solve the equation in terms of T2. So divide both sides by P1. I'll plug everybody in. Okay, do the math. And you end up with 364 Kelvin. Convert it back to Celsius, and you get 91 degrees C. So... Uh, So there you go. All right, now we're going to use the combined gas law. Uh, sample of sulfur dioxide, and it's a gas, uh, occupies a volume of 652 mils at 4 degrees Celsius to 712 millimeters of mercury. What is the volume? What volume will the sulfur dioxide occupy at SDP? So SDP is 273 Kelvin at one atmosphere. So we need to convert the pressure from um, from uh, 720 millimeters mercury to atmospheres. And then because we're using uh, temperature in our equation, we have to change Celsius to Kelvin. So we're going to do temperature first. Add 42, 273, you get 313. And change pressure to atmospheres. The relationship is one atmosphere over 760. Uh, and then the atmosphere says 0.95. So the, the pressure is going to go up and the, uh, and the well, and the, the uh, temperature is going to go down okay uh, so so here's our equation and we're going to solve for v2 so uh, uh, so do the do the appropriate math so you, you have this equation here uh, and then solve for v2 so divide both sides by t p2 t1 and you get this plug everybody in and get Okay, and then the atmospheres cancel out, and the Kelvin cancel out, and you end up with 504 d mils. Does it make sense? Well, the decrease in temperature going from 40 is going to ca cause the volume go down, um, and the decrease in uh, the increase in pressure actually. Uh, the decrease in pressure is going to cause the pressure, the decrease in pressure is going to want the volume to increase, and so they kind of counterbalance each other. So it's, uh, using the ideal gas law, sometimes it, when you look at these numbers, it's hard to tell what's going to happen until after you do the equation. So the volume goes... Okay, so uh, let's do problem two for combined gas laws. So the initial sample, argon has five decimeters cubed pressure 0.292 atmospheres in it. Um, we don't know the initial temperature. That's what we're going to find. So we know v, uh, V1 and P1. Uh, the final temperature is 30 degrees Celsius and final volume is 5.7 liters and the final pressure is 800 millimeters mercury. Again, what we want to do is find T1. So uh, we have to do some conversions here, obviously. Um, we have decimeters cubed and liters, so we have to make them the same units. I'm going to change uh, decimeters to liters. Uh, we have atmospheres and millimeters of mercury. I'm going to turn to millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. And temperature, uh, there's going to be two parts here. You, first of all, you, to, you got to change the 30 degrees to Kelvin to do the uh, calculation. And then you're gonna have to change it back to uh, uh, Celsius, okay? So first thing we'll do is uh, do the conversions. And the first one is uh, the volume of decimeters cubed. Now, so y you have to know these conversion factors. Um, I know, I had to look this one up, and you're all you're allowed to do that unless I uh, I tell you you can't, and you're uh, 
in that case I will give you the information um, I know there's 10 centimeters per one decimeter so uh, but I'm asking for decimeters cubed all right so that means they have to cube to two 10 centimeters now I remember doing these long time ago when I would what I would do is when I, I would just cube I'd cube the centimeters and not the 10 as well so make sure when you cube this it's going to be uh, the 10 is going to be cubed the centimeter is going to be cubed as well all right and so when you do that the uh, so the relationship so you could have uh, so this is the way to set it up the conversion factor so the decimeters cancel out all right and then you're left with centimeters cubed okay uh, and good, kind of good way to do conversions is go through the uh, units first and then then actually go through the numbers and that uh, so that you're you're sure that you got the right units so eventually I want to get the liters and so I know that one centimeter cubed is equal to one millimeter and again either look that up or it's given to you and again you want to set it up where the centimeters cubed is on the bottom so it cancels out with the centimeters cubed on the top and now I have milliliters all right okay and then the final conversion I know there's one liter 1,000 mils one liter I uh, set it up so the millimeters are on the bottom so they cancel out okay all right so then my end units end up being liters which is what I want okay uh, so do the math and you get that it's five liters now I'm being a little sloppy again with the uh, sig figs uh, this would have two sig figs it should be 5.0 that's because all these guys are exact all right you don't have to worry about their sig figs because they're exact so the only sig figs that matter here are the 5.0 and so this should be 5.0 but I'm gonna leave it off for now um so now I want to so my all right so my final temperature was 30 degrees Celsius so I want to get that Kelvin so I just add 273 to 30 I'm gonna, again a little sloppy I'm not gonna do the 0.15 I just want to be able to show you to do the math uh, the setup so it's 303k all right final pressure I want to get this in terms of atmospheres not millimeters of mercury so that I can relate it to the 0.92 um, I know the relationship in one atmosphere to 760 millimeters of mercury I set this this relationship ship up so that the millimeters mercury cancel out and I'm left with atmospheres or 1.05 atmospheres okay so what do I have so I need to find T1 and I know T2 303 uh, Kelvin I know the initial pressure 0.92 uh, I know the final pressure 1.05 and uh, atmospheres and I know the initial uh, volume 5.0 liters and final volume is 5.7 liters okay so here's the equation I want to solve for T1 so you could have the equation like this or like this I kind of like this version right here because uh, everything's all the only thing I have to do is divide okay so um so I'm gonna divide both sides by P2 V2 and I end up with T1 all right and I plug everything in so I got uh, 0 0.92 times 5 liters 303 Kelvin divided by 1.05 which is my final uh, pressure and my final volume of 5.7 liters and that comes up to a value of 235 Kelvin all right so that's the temperature in Kelvin uh, now I want to do is, is uh, get that in Celsius so to do that you know Kelvin's equal to 273 plus C so Celsius is equal to K minus 273 so we get home um, 235 minus 273 is negative 38 Kelvin all right 
So, uh, going to do the ideal gas law, do a couple of these. Um, so, the ideal gas laws, uh, you're not going to, for the previous laws, we do is you start from one, one, uh, one state and then you change it to another state, okay, uh, by changing volume or pressure or temperature or number of particles. Um, in terms of the ideal gas law, you're not doing that. What you do is you just have a state, and what you're doing is finding out uh, an unknown. So you have pressure, volume, N, and T, okay? And so what you're doing is, is that you're looking, you're given three of these, and you would be solving for the other one. So there's no change in state here. What there is is a change in, I mean, there's an unknown. So, uh, so you have to look for your known. So the equation that we have is PV equals nRT. Um, and so let's see what they want. They want us to find temperature. So I rearrange the equation so I get this. Uh, what I know is, is that moles of gas is 4. So and the pressure is 5.6 atmosphere and 12 liters. Okay. So everything is in the right units for using uh, this gas constant. Okay, and this is typically the gas con uh, universal gas constant that we'll use um, when we do these gas laws. Okay, you will see other ones later on if, um, but they won't be used for uh, the ideal gas law. Okay, so for so this so for the universal gas constant using 0.0821 or point uh, 0.08205, I rounded this up to one. Um, you need liters, atmospheres, moles, and you need Kelvin. All right, so this one's just simple. You just plug everything in. So you have 5.6 atmosphere, 12, uh, 12 liters. So that's your atmosphere and pressure. Uh, I mean, you know, volume. And then you have your number of moles, 4. And your R is this uh, value here. So uh, let's look at the units first. So we have um, moles. We're going to look at the dominant denominator first. So the denominator, so we have moles and mole minus 1, so they cancel out. All right, and then you end up with liters, atmospheres, Kelvin, minus 1 on the bottom, okay? All right, and then what you have is it's then, uh, so you can cancel out the atmospheres, and you can cancel out the liters. And you have K over 1, which is the same thing as 1 over K minus 1, which is the same thing as K. All right. So the units end up being K like you want. So plug in the num numbers, you get 205. So the answer is 205 Kelvin. Okay, gas law, ideal gas law, law number 2. Okay. Um, you have unknown quantity of gas. So what we're going to do is find N. Uh, the pressure is 811 millimeters of mercury, volume of 312 centimeters cube, temperature of 87 Celsius. All of them not good to use our gas constant. So what we have to do is get this to atmospheres, we have to get this to liters, and we have to get this to Kelvin. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is get uh, the millimercury, meters of mercury to atmosphere. So the relationship is one atmosphere for 760. Uh, put the 760 millimeters on the bottom, cancel out, you get 1.07 atmospheres. Um, for the volume, so you know there's 312 centimeters cube. Uh, you also know one mil is equal to one centimeters cube. So set it up so centimeters cube, so you have millimeters on the bottom. Okay, then there are one liter per thousand milliliters and they cancel out and so you end up with 0.312 liters and finally the uh, temperature is 87 plus 273 or 360k again being a little sloppy with uh, sig figs uh, so uh, so let's just go with the calculation here um, Okay, so if we did the sig figs, this would have two two digits, all right, uh, 
Remember, it's addition, so it would be, uh, even if it was 0.15, okay, so it would be, it'd be 360.15. Uh, the This doesn't have any uh, member addition. You just count the, the number of significant digits is uh, the decimal uh, number digits, right, a decimal, and this has zero, so your answer is going to ask that zero. So this this zero actually counts here, all right? All right, so I don't know, you could put a dot there, I guess, if you want. Um, because two, three plus seven is ten. All right, so so this this guy here, uh, the answer is two significant digits, but when we do the calculation, and the next is going to have three. So in the addition, to figure out the number of significant figs, you use two use the numbers right at the decimal point, but when you use this value now, in the calculation, it will have three sig figs. And you could write this as 3.60 times 10 to the second. Um, this, this up here, the, uh, this would have, this is an exact conversion, so you don't have to worry about it. So this has three sig figs as well. So, you, so your answer here has three sig figs. Uh, this has three sig figs. These are exact, so your answer gets three sig figs. So each one of these these values here have three sig figs when we do this calculation down here. Okay, this one this one here could be a little confusing because you go, oh, I only had two fit sig figs figuring it out, but it changes because now this number is 360, all right, 3.60 times 10 to the second. All right, so um, right, so we we plug, so we rearrange the equation, and we get uh, okay the units, the units all work out to be moles, and then you do the calculations, okay. All right, and then when you do the calculations, you get point zero one one. Two nine, and we round that up to the three digits, so it's point one point zero one one three moles. Dalton's law of partial pressure. Uh, problem number one. Okay, you have a container that has three gases: oxygen, carbon dioxide, and helium. And each one has a pressure. And the, the pressure, so it's two atmosphere, three atmosphere, four atmosphere. And the pressure comes from the number of particles. Okay. The uh, t temperature and volume are constant. Okay. So the only way you can change pressure is by adding particles. So this two atmosphere, three atmosphere, and four atmosphere are all determined by number of particles. Um, that'll be important for the next problem. So, uh, so there's a relationship between the pressure and the number of particles, okay? And the relationship is, you know, ideal gas law. But um, so the equation for uh, the total pressure is simply uh, P1 plus P2 plus 3 uh, going on. Uh, and it, it doesn't matter what gases you have, okay? Because we're assuming... Uh, all the gases behave the same um, because of the ideal gas law, okay? And uh, all of this is independent of mass. So this is what you call intensive uh, property. And um, so you just simply add up the individual pressures and you get two plus three plus five is equal to nine atmospheres. Okay, the second problem is a little harder. Uh, so it says the partial pressure F2 is one atmosphere. Um, okay, so the total pressure is one atmosphere. The pressure due to the F2 is 300 torr. Okay, so, um, so you have, so there's, so the total pressure of the gas is going to equal to 
uh, the pressure of the F2 plus whatever the other gases are. All right. Okay. I'll just call O for other. All right. So, um, so what we want to do is figure out how much of the uh, gas is is the um, is due to the flooring. Okay, so we well we have to get the same units. So we have to change tor, tor and tor is basically is the same uh, has the same as millimeters of mercury. So one atmosphere is equal to seven sixty tor, and it's simply 0.39. So this here is 0.39 uh, atmospheres. And the total pressure is one atmosphere. Okay. Now, and then the, the other gases would exert the rest of the pressure, which we won't, it's not asking, but it'd be 0.61 atmospheres. Okay. That's not what we're going to ask. Okay. So what we want to do is find out what portion of the gas in terms of moles or molecules is... Um, is flooring okay so so the ratio of the pressures these two pressures is equal to the ratio of the of the um, mole, number of molecules so so the ratio of this right here has to equal the um, Oops. Number of mar molecules to the number of total number of molecules. Okay, and in fact, this is what the question is asking for. It's asking for this ratio. What is the ratio, or the mole fraction, of the number of um, fluorine molecules to the total number of molecules? Well, that's got to be the same as this. All right. Okay, because this, these terms would determine the pressure. Okay, so we know what this is. It's simply 3, 9. We figured that already. So this is 3, 9 over 1. Okay, so, so this number here, this, this is the mole fraction is 0.339. So mole fraction is the uh, whatever the in this case the of mole fraction of N2 is this this right here. And that's got to be equal to the kind of the pressure um fraction as well. Okay. So the answer is 0.39. Or another way you could state is 39% of the molecules are fluorine. All right, now we're going to do a couple with Graham's law. And um, so under the same conditions of temperature and pressure, how many times faster will hydrogen effuse compared to carbon dioxide? So, uh, so let's say you had a spray can. All right, two spray cans here. All right, one has hydrogen, H2, and this one is CO2. Okay, uh, and you want to know which one has the gas particles move out faster. Okay. All right, uh, to do that, you need to know the mass the, uh, of each one, okay, the, in relative masses. And so uh, hydrogen is one gram per mole. And carbon dioxide is 44. If you don't know how to do that right, figure out grams per mole. That's a, that's fine. I will give you these if um, for a question like these. So we have the equation: the velocity two over velocity one has to equal to the mass one over mass two uh, to square root. Okay. So um, so what we're finding is this ratio here. It says how many times faster is we'll say v2 we'll say uh hydrogen is h is v2 
and the carbon dioxide is CO2. All right. So how many times faster is hydrogen than carbon dioxide? All right. So uh, it's what you do is you take the two masses. All right. And so M1 is going to be the carbon dioxide, so that's going to be 44. And um, H2 is going to be 2. All right. And then uh, you just do the math. Which is 4.7 times faster. And the last problem is uh, if the carbon dioxide in the previous problem takes 32 seconds to diffuse, how, how long will it, the uh, hydrogen take? Well, we know that the uh, hydrogen is 4.7 times faster. So if it's 32, then this is going to be 4.2 4 times faster, or it's going to be 6.8 seconds. Okay, so that finishes the problems that have to do with ideal gas law. Uh, I will send out some problems to work on, and there will be uh, a test on this by the uh, oh, beginning by mid mid next week, um, second week of class. Okay. Um, if you have any questions about any of this, uh, just let me know.